Welcome to a new video about analog filter design. In this example, we'll discuss the elliptic response, low pass filter design. Of course, we will see shortly everything step by step and verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, our design objective is shown here an elliptic response, active low pass filters. We will use a state variable circuit, and our DC gain should be 1 or 0 dB if the filter order is odd. Our specifications are shown here. We like to have a maximum passment ripple, a max of 0.5 dB. The minimum attenuation should be 40 dB. And the passment frequency should be 600 Hz. And our stop end frequency is 1.8 kHz. So at this frequency of 1.8 kHz, our attenuation must be at least 40 dB. And at this frequency of 60 Hz, our gain should drop by 0.5 dB compared to our DC gain of 0 dB, of course, if that is an odd filter. Okay, let's see how we can design this elliptic response low-pass filter. First, we start with the filter order. So the selectivity factor for that is necessary. That is the ratio of the stop end frequency and the passment frequency. Now, from the specifications, we know that this is then equal to 3. And this is the maximum allowed value. So you can go, of course, lower. But if you go higher, then you don't fulfill this specification. So there's an important value we need to use in our design. Now the transfer function of an elliptic response, low pass filter, is given in general like so for odd order. So 1, 3, 5, 7. And for an even order uh, filter, you have this expression. You see here a couple of parameters. So I will also bring up the table we will use here because we need to have a passment ripple of 0.5 dB. And our attenuation should be 40 dB. So a specific filter table for the elliptic response is shown here. And we see also the parameters we have here in this transfer function, like the zero frequency. These are all normalized values. We see here the AI, which is the subscript I, is for the filter stage or section number. And see also here the BI, it's all shown here actually. And there's also the parameter here, which is H0, which is the pole zero gain. In this case, we need to have the third order, so we need to have this row. You see here a couple of parameters we need to look at. And if we now look at the table for this situation, then we see that we have an FR of 2.71147. If you go up, you see here 8.48 approximately. And if you go down, you see 1.628, etc. So in order to fulfill this selectivity factor of 3, we need to have this. If you go up, that should be then a second order, but that is not sufficient because this is higher than this maximum allowed of 3. You can go down to 1.62, etc., but that is maybe an overkill, but then you need to also design a fourth order elliptic response filter. So in this case, our third order filter is sufficient for this situation. Parameters from this table, they are all normalized are then like so. So we have the total pole zero gain, which is then this H0, which is actually shown here, this, this number, this value. We see also here the zero frequency squared, again, in the normalized values, that's actually from this entry. You see the A1, which is for the first stage, that is actually shown here. And you see also the B1, which is the parameter here. Now the second stage will be a first order that is actually the cascading of a second order and a first order making up a third order filter. So we will use these values in order to calculate the actual component values for our final design. Now our transfer function then can be written like so. You see here now the first order low pass section times the second order low pass section here. That is all from this expression here for the odd order transfer function. Now, making this more compact, you can also write it like so. Now, bringing it all here, and we also need only this entry and these values, we can start now the next steps. That is actually the frequency scaling factors. Now, in this case, for the elliptic response, frequency scaling factor, which is called Kf, is equal to omega p, which is then 2 pi times this fp, which is then 1200 pi radians per second. Now, this is an important value because we need to use this to scale up our uh, values to the actual component values for our final design. Now, in the natural frequency and the quality factor per stage needs to be calculated as our step four. For first stage, stage one, that was the state variable low pass filter, and stage two will be just a passive RC low pass filter. 
Now zero frequency, let's start with that one. That is given by this expression. You see here the omega z1, which is the zero frequency of the first stage, is the scaling factor, the frequency scaling factor times the square root of this entry here, which see actually also here. The natural frequency is then given by this. You see here that we need the b1, which is then this entry, and it will give you this value. The quality factor is calculated using the entries also from the table, and that is in this case 1.844. Now that is done for stage one. Stage two is a passive RC low pass filter circuit. And there we have the natural frequency, which is just the pole frequency here in the normalized form times the frequency scaling factor here. And that will result in this 2485 radians per second. And the quality factor for a passive low pass filter is always 0.5. So Q2 is 0.5. Now we are done and we are ready for the circuit realization and the component values. So this is now step five. So this is the circuit. You see that here as the state variable circuit. In here, you see here four op amps and a couple of resistors. And also here in the feedback, you see this, uh, the capacitor C6. And this is now using the capacitor here and this resistor that makes this RC low pass filter. Denormalized values are summarized here. You see here the low pass filter stage one and two. The quality factors, so 1.844 for our first stage. The second stage was the pure passive RC, low pass filter, but just 0.5. The natural frequency and the zero frequency. The zero frequency of our passive RC low pass filter will be at infinite, so that's actually what is uh, mentioned here. Okay, let's now calculate the component values here, a couple of resistors and capacitors, so we need to calculate them all. In this case, we select the resistor R here and here. So we have actually four R's here. We take it as 100 kilo ohm and also the capacitor C, which is here and here as 100 nanofarad. It's just an arbitrary value. Then we can calculate the other values like so. So stage one, we can do R1 is equal to R4. That is then given by this expression. You see here the Q1, the omega N1 and the C we have selected. So we take the Q1 from the table we take the omega n1 from the table here and we also take the c from the selected value here and that will result in this value for the resistor r1 and r4 now r2 and r3 is calculated using this formula again using the natural frequency for the first stage and the capacitor we have selected so that will result in this value the r5 is calculated using this formula you see here the zero frequency natural frequency the quality factor and the resistor we have selected here in 100 kilo ohm and that will result here in 7328 ohm and that is this resistor value here now the required gain or dc gain at this for this situation should be 1 or 0 db because we have an odd order so that means k is 1 and that is appearing in this formula you see here the c6 that is this resistor is a ratio here again natural frequency and the zero frequency quantity squared times k times r. Now k is 1 and the r we have selected here 100 kilo ohm and that will result here in approximately 11.9 kilo ohms. Now we are done with the first stage. Now the final one is just this capacitor C6 and that is then given by this expression. You see here the natural frequency of the second stage which is actually shown here. That is equal to 1 over r6 times C6. So we have the C6, that's actually from stage one. So we can calculate now uh, C6, which is our capacitor, and that will be done this 33.81 nanofarads. So we have now all the components for our final design. Okay, let's now go to the simulation results. We also have summarized the values we just calculated here. These are the selected component values, and these are the calculated values. Now this is a circuit for this situation this is the circuit we have also drawn in our spy simulator you see all the resistors r1 r2 i mean r1 and r4 the capacitors the r's here they're all shown here and also the other values we have also four operational amplifiers okay let's now first go to the simulation results the body plot you see here in blue the gain plot so we see the uh, gain here and the frequency and this is again the filter circuit we have in our spy simulator first we start with the dc gain it's indeed 0 db 
The next one is about the frequency. So at 600 Hertz, we see here gain of minus 0.5 dB as we required. So this is indeed correct. We see here at 1.58 kilohertz, so 1,800 hertz, we see here a gain of minus 54 dB, which is more than the required 40 dB uh, attenuation. So this is indeed as expected and as required. We also see here the cutoff frequency, which is, was not a specification, but you see that it, was, it is appearing at 691 hertz. And there is also an interesting thing here, this because there's a notch here, which is at this frequency, but it is going up but we'll never go above this minus 40 dB because that is really our minimum attenuation we require and it is happening at this frequency. And this frequency, which is called the notch frequency is, and that is also our zero frequency from first stage because that was actually calculated like so. And if you divide this by two pi, you get this approximate value of 1862 Hertz, which is very close to what we have here in our simulations. Let's now go to the body plot and then zoom in in the past when the ripple region again so this is now the region where you see the ripple and we see here again our dc gain our passport frequency and there's a peak and there is a valley so in this passport region you see indeed that the gain is going down and going up and going down again and this is where we talk about the past band ripple of 0.5 db because this distance here is indeed 0.5 db all right, that was our example considering the elliptic response active low pass filter. We have used our state variable circuit to calculate the component values and verified our calculation using the SPI simulations. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.